Berlin at the Fair Future Forum. This world-changing event is a get-together for heads of state, representatives of local communities, academics and businessmen. They're now meeting behind closed doors and as soon as they come out, we'll be the first to find out what the outcome is of this summit. How would you say that um, the Middle East and North Africa has contributed to the situation that we've got to today in 2043? Okay, I'm very happy to give you the news that we have just uh, sold and produced our last barrel of oil. Uh, we have decided for the last 30 years we have a strategy of stopping uh, the production of uh, fossil fuel, dirty fossil fuel, and moving to more renewable energy resources. So we are happy to, to share this news. You'll be the first broadcasting channel to, <laughs> to spread this news around because the Middle East no longer is a place for dirty fossil fuel that has, this has been the reputation of the Middle East for so long. Today we are a big and the largest investor in renew renewable energy and we're contributing so much to the world in general and especially to Europe as we are starting our solar energy market. Um, we have already have a lot of investors interested and ready to put so much uh, money into our market and we're happy and proud of this step. We, we have always wanted to do the shift and to do the energy transition to more clean renewable energy sources. So I think that uh, the international governance and international resource governance has helped us tremendously get to that step today. Uh, a lot of political pressure was needed, a lot of political will as well. And I think that the MENA region has played an important part. They played uh, the mediator part in getting uh, agreements to happen and uh, to, to be binding to all countries. So we've benefited a lot and we have also contributed as well. And how did those agreements come together? So how did that actually work? Was it, you know, was it just, was it the president or whatever saying, you know, this has to happen? Was it top down or? Yeah. Well, uh, I would take you back to 30 years. And uh, if you have seen the breaking news of in the Middle East, it has been about people's power and people getting the power back to the streets. Uh, they're uh, went, going to the streets, mobilizing themselves to ask for their natural resources rights. They're asking for their human rights. Uh, so the governments have uh, been skeptical at first, but I think the previous governments before me uh, have decided to take the people seriously and to listen to the people and to their demands, especially on energy resources. As you know, it's a highly securitized issue in our region, in the Middle East and North Africa. So we believe that listening to people has been our strongest point. Today we have a quota for young people. So young people, especially women, are interested and encouraged to take part in decision making. So it's no longer on educational level that young people are active or, or on entrepreneurship level. We are trying to get all this information that, is, that they are aware of. They are ambassadors today of our countries. And they give us always creative ideas and taking us out of the normal uh, traditional methods of doing business and doing politics. You, you don't see this region as an enclosed fortress anymore. So, but now it's not just money able to cross borders, it's not just like people from here allowed to travel, but it's really everyone. And they don't need anymore to have a value of, of efficiency and of you know, market value to be able to cross borders. But it is, so this is one important change which we benefited from. Um, as well, we really got a, a, a higher awareness um, of being a global citizen. So um, if you look at, at the daily life of a person over here, you can't compare it to like 50 years ago or 30 years ago, where people were really like sinking to be global through their uh, smartphones. But people are really connected now. So this is, I think, one of the biggest uh, changes. Of course, the living standards went down. We don't like we can't have all we want all the time. But I think that's a benefit. We notice that's a lie, and this is a lie which is built on, you know, exploitation. Now, if you look at the and at business models, over ninety nine percent of business models are not corporations anymore, but are collectives and and uh, working in with social economy. So this is something I think comes from the heart of our people, um, as fascist as this might sound. But then uh, further on, we, we were able to enforce self-sustainable agriculture. So um, this is something people were very keen to learn from us. We were showing everyone in the world how you can produce locally, um, even though everyone always claims it was not a European idea. 
But um, I think quite a few scientists were uh, happy to help there. Do you remember the president of the Ukraine when he was uh, talking about the solidarity model for everyone? People were shaking. This was, what, 2020, and now it's normality. So there were some moments like that where Europe stood up in, in, um, in the UN and globally and all of a sudden opened doors to things that, of course, the, the subaltern globally was demanding, but no one could hear their voice. So that it really used back doors of culture, both top down, um, yes, we have to admit, even though it's not very popular, but um, I think without this uh, strong lead of certain uh, people who like to take power, uh, the power could be redistributed. And this is what power is about. The most um, responsible way to deal with power is to redistribute it and not use it yourself. So I am Dolores Rojas Rubio, and I am Minister of uh, Social and Environmental Issues in Latin America. Well, of course, Latin America has an important role in this success. And this, uh, first of all, that we are decided to not put uh, fuel at the market and not consume more fossil fuels, not consume much more, right? reduce our internal consume in Latin America. The richest people will pay more taxes, and uh, those who polluted more pay taxes too. So that's a way that we can have income, and if you want to pollute, okay, you have to pay. Okay, so how, how is the region using its nat nat natural resources now? What's the sort of use and distribution now? Resources? No, we are not talking about resources. They are commons. So we are uh, the guardians of the commons. And so we are, uh, I am a minister, and as a minister, I command obeying. And people are saying, we have to take care of these commons. There are no resources. We have to change that, uh, that mindset because that's part of the problem. Communities, neighborhoods, everybody has their own local, local, local uh, authorities, and they are naming these representatives there. And so when you have a charge, minister, or whatever, you're a server. You're not, uh, how to say, it, you're not a, a privileged people. You are going to do what people want that you do. We uh, had to change our mind, and we look the region as uh, a space of possibilities. And so we didn't divide in this country and this one, no. This, all this region, how we have here, how we can uh, combine and to have this rescued all these uh, multicultural ways of being in the world. I try, I may be mistake, but try again. And of course, of course, the um, equality between men and women, I think that that was one of the main contributions here in Latin America. It has been, a, it's not a, an easy thing, and it's now finished, never is finished. Until 2013, Asia countries, Asian countries um, have faced a lot of um, conflicts as, uh, in terms of um, natural resource use. So that was when all Asian Cooperation Council was established. The objective is to um, to have a council that leaders from all countries can actually discuss and find common solutions. The de decision that AACC has taken already is um, we we decided to create an action program called redevelopment uh, is an action that covers four pillars. First one, the first one is on human rights. The second is on um, environments and natural resources. The third one is on urbanization. And the fourth one is on rural livelihood.
the civil society in Asia, in Asia has already formed um, a function called public fora, which is a function in each countries and cooperate uh, and have a network between countries that includes um, like local people, scientists, um, and also um, NGOs in the in 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 the countries, so that um, they can inform the policymakers what they really need and what could be their effects. So we managed to make this work like the parallel mechanism between the mul like the multilateral platform at the inter international international level and the uh, local platform where local can inform policymakers. So we we managed to um, make this happen like smoothly. This is another area in which um, Africa really hugely contributed on the, on the global domain, is in showing just how powerful the people can be um, in influencing real political change. So it hasn't been top down at all. In fact, um, you know, there's, I think the, a number of us will remember, you know, several um, key moments in relation, for example, to the ridiculous food um, prices in 2015. Um, you know, in Africa, we all, you know, will remember the time when women you know, um, bared their breasts, which was the ultimate sign of anger and disgust and frustration. Um, and governments across the continent, in fact, really um, began to listen. Um, women took to the streets, women and, and the youth, so there was the youth uprising as well in 2018 in response again to high unemployment um, and similarly in response to the, the ridiculous food prices we've mentioned. So that really was this powerful kind of upsurge from, from the people um, and an upsurge of the youth involvement and women involvement. Um, so yeah, certainly not top down. And a response to that was then land reform issues. Um, again, meaningful land reform, which recognized the role of women in society. So, you know, equitable gender land reform and tenure. Um, and also this, you know, involvement of the youth as well. So I think in, in, in one of, again, in relation to those changes, um, we've seen um, a, a reduction, a significant reduction in poverty um, as a result of this, this real um, change in our, our um, agricultural pr processes. Um, and this focus on small scale farming um, and organic farming in particular, you know, has seen also a, 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 an increase in our productivity um, on African on African land, and this has also been across the across the continent. Um, and also, we've seen um, an emphasis on women and youth empowerment, um, which not in a tokenistic way, but in a very real way. So, women being represented and taking the forefront in in the revolution in terms of agriculture and and land ownership and land tenure.